Thank you for joining me for worship today. Today is the fourth Sunday in Advent. Our order of service is in the bulletin. We're going to begin right now with hymn number 35, Of the Father's Love Begotten. sinful. I have disobeyed you and justly deserve your punishment both now and in eternity. But I am truly sorry for the evil I have thought, spoken, and done. And for the sake of my Savior, Jesus Christ, I pray, Lord, have mercy on me, a sinner. Lord, have mercy on us. Christ have mercy on us, Lord have mercy on us. I now ask you before God, who 
searches the heart? Do you confess your sins of thought, word, and deed? Are you sorry for your sins? Do you look to our Savior, Jesus Christ, for forgiveness? And with the Holy Spirit's help, do you want to correct your sinful life? Then declare so by saying, yes. Yes. Upon this confession, I, as a called servant of the word, announce to you God's grace and the forgiveness of sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our epistle reading for this fourth Sunday in Advent is from Romans chapter 1, verses 1 to 7. In this section, the Apostle Paul is talking about, oh, the glory of the church because Christ came. The opening of his letter, Paul, a servant of Christ Jesus, called to be an apostle and set apart for the gospel of God, the gospel he promised beforehand through his prophets in the Holy Scriptures regarding his son, who as to his human nature was a descendant of David, and who through the spirit of holiness was declared with power to be the son of God by his resurrection from the dead. Christ Jesus, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Through him and for his name's sake, we receive grace and apostleship to call people from among all the Gentiles to the obedience that comes from faith. And you also are among those who are called to belong to Jesus Christ. To all in Rome who are loved by God and called to be saints, Grace and peace to you from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. Alleluia. The virgin will be with child and will give birth to a son and they will call him Emmanuel. Alleluia. Alleluia. reading is from Matthew chapter 1 verses 18 to 25 where we hear about the angel coming to Joseph and, and the birth of our Savior. This is how the birth of Jesus Christ came about. His mother Mary was pledged to be married to Joseph, but before they came together she was found to be with child through the Holy Spirit. Because Joseph, her husband, was a righteous man and did not want to expose her to public disgrace, he had in mind to divorce her quietly. But after he had considered this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary home as your wife, because what is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will give birth to a son, and you are to give him the name Jesus, because he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what the Lord had said through the prophet. The virgin will be with child and will give birth to a son, and they will call him Emmanuel, which means God with us. When Joseph woke up, he did what the angel of the Lord had commanded him and took Mary home as his wife. But he had no union with her until she gave birth to a son, and he gave him the name Jesus. We'll sing our next hymn, hymn number 36, A Great and Mighty Wonder. is deep. 
deity. Repeat the hymn again. To God on I be glory and peace on earth to man. The word becomes incarnate and yet remains on I. And cherubim sing anthems to shepherds from the sky. Repeat the hymn again. To God on I be glory and peace on earth to man. While thus they sing your monarch, those bright angelic bands, rejoice O vales and mountains and oceans, clap your hands, repeat the hymn again. To God on I be glory and peace on earth to man. Since all he comes to ransom, by all be he adored. The infant born in Bethlehem, our Savior and the Lord. Repeat the hymn again. To God on I be glory and peace on earth to man. All idols that shall perish and Satan's lying cease. And Christ shall raise the scepter, decreeing endless peace. Repeat the hymn again. To God on I be glory and peace on earth to man. Glory to God in the highest and on earth peace, good will toward men. Amen. The word of God we want to consider today is our Old Testament reading from Isaiah chapter 7 verses 10 to 14. Isaiah writes, Again the Lord spoke to Ahaz, Ask the Lord your God for a sign, whether in the deepest depths or in the highest heights. But Ahaz said, I will not ask. I will not put the Lord to the test. Then Isaiah said, Hear now, you house of David. Is it not enough to try the patience of men? Will you try the patience of my God also? Therefore the Lord himself will give you a sign. The virgin will be with child and will give birth to a son and will call him Emmanuel. Let's bow our heads for prayer. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, who art our strength and our salvation. Amen. My dear fellow believers in the Son of God, who became also the Son of Man to save us. Joseph Damien was a Belgian priest who back in 1873, he went to the Hawaiian Islands because he was going to serve a leper colony there. And well, when he came to Molokai, what he did is he tried to build up relationships with all these sick lepers. He really poured his heart into the effort. He, he built a small chapel for them to worship in. He held regular worship services, but hardly anyone came. Hardly anyone came. And then, well, he was there for 12 years, and after 12 years, still nothing. And because of that, he finally decided to give up. And so he headed to this pier where he was going to catch a boat and, 
and leave. But as he was standing at the pier, what happened is he happened to look at his hands and, and he saw these white spots on his hands. And those white spots, what they indicated is he had contacted, contracted the deadly disease himself. And so instead of leaving the islands, he instead went back to the leper colony and, and decided that he was going to try to serve the people again. And when the people heard that he had come back and when they heard that he also had leprosy, what happened is that hundreds of people came around the hut in which he was staying. And now all of a sudden what was the case is that these people, they kind of looked at him at first and said, you can't relate, you don't know what we're going through. And now all of a sudden they realized that he also was going through the same thing. He was faced with the same problems that they were faced with. And then on that next Sunday what happened is that he held his worship service and, and the chapel was filled to overflowing. And, and really that began, despite his leprosy, the beginning of a tremendous ministry serving people with the gospel of Jesus Christ. Well, what was the difference? The lepers were able to look at him and know that he knew, he understood their condition. There was no question in their minds about whether or not he cared for them. He knew, they knew that that was the same, that, that they cared for him. And in the same way, what we can think about, we have this amazing God. He's not someone who doesn't relate to us, who can't understand what we're going through. We have a God who came into our world to be one of us. As Joseph Damien was ready to become one of the lepers, so we have a Savior who was ready to be one of us. He did become also one of us. And he did that so that we could have eternal life. Today, through the prophet Isaiah, the Lord reveals to us the promise of the virgin birth. That's how God became also man, became the God-man to be our Savior. And that promise of the virgin birth, it reveals God's grace. It demonstrates God's patience and it guarantees God's presence. King Ahaz, he was a king who ruled over the southern kingdom of Judah more than 700 years before Christ was born. And, and sadly, he was one of the bad kings who really hurt the people of Judah. What he did is he sacrificed his own sons to the Canaanite gods. He closed the temple and he set up idol gods throughout the city of Jerusalem. At the time of our reading though, Ahaz was in trouble. And that's because Syria and the northern kingdom of Israel, they had allied themselves together against Judah against the southern kingdom of Judah and Judah was and Ahaz they were being beaten so badly and and under those circumstances tragically instead of turning to the Lord to look for help what Ahaz did is he turned to King Tiglath Pileser Pileser of Assyria he turned to him instead of turning to the Lord and well, that's when God intervened. And well, think about our reading for today. He intervened and he sent the prophet Isaiah to King Ahaz to tell him that they didn't need to be worried about Syria and the northern kingdom of Israel. 
that Judah would be safe. The Lord would take care of his people. They didn't need to look to other nations or anywhere else to seek help. God would be their helper. The opening words of our reading for today. Again, the Lord spoke to Ahaz. Those are words, similar words throughout Scripture that a person could almost really just breeze over without really grasping their full significance. But it says, again, the Lord spoke to Ahaz. And those are important words because what they do is they reveal God's grace. God's grace to Ahaz and, and well, also to us as well. The fact is, is that Ahaz, he was an unbeliever. He deliberately did what was contrary to the word of God. But yet, what did God do? God spoke to him. Again and again, God spoke to him. And why did he do that? Well, the Lord in his grace and mercy was reaching out to him. He kept reaching out to him, and from what the scriptures seem to say about Ahaz, he ended up dying as an unbeliever, but that wasn't God's fault. Because what God had done is God had repeatedly reached out to him with the word of God. Well, right now, we're about to celebrate the Savior's birth once again, and it's a story that Ultimately, we don't deserve to hear. We don't deserve to have God speaking to us because we are the sinners that we are. Because we're the sinners that we are, we deserve God to just turn his back on us forever. But we don't deserve that. But, but our Heavenly Father instead, what he did is to us undeserving sinners, he gave us a Savior. He gave us the Savior that we needed and he's giving us the wonderful opportunity again to hear the Christmas story this, this Christmas season so that that word of God, it can work on our hearts and, well, it can work on people's hearts so that unbelievers are called to faith in the Savior, so that we believers are built up and strengthened in our faith to assure us that our sins are forgiven and to tell us of God's grace and love and that heaven is our home. Well, Ahaz, he didn't want to listen to God, but God kept on speaking to him over and over again. And well, may the Holy Spirit build up and strengthen our faith so that, so that we always want to hear the Christmas story over and over again. And then we also want to hear about the passion of our Savior, about Easter, about Pentecost, and, and everything that the scriptures tell us about God's amazing grace and love for us. Well, to the unbelieving Ahaz, the Lord said, Ask the Lord your God for a sign whether in the deepest depths or in the highest heights. God was offering Ahaz a sign, a little bit of visible evidence that he could have that would give him a little bit of assurance that he didn't need to be concerned about Syria or the northern kingdom of Israel. God was demonstrating here his patience with Ahaz, well, keeping on reaching out to him as he did. Instead of saying to Ahaz, as he really could have, he could have said, I've had enough with this guy. I'm not gonna deal with him anymore. In, and just struck him down, sentenced him, sent him immediately to his eternal punishment. But God kept on reaching out to him. And we can be so thankful that God demonstrates that same kind of patience with you and me. Now, have there been times in our lives when we ended up getting 
fed up with someone else and maybe because we got fed up with someone else that they caused us so much grief and so much frustration in life that we just kind of said, I don't want to have anything to do with them ever again. We've probably had times like that in our lives, but now just think about it. How many times has our sinfulness, how many times has my sinfulness meant that God was fed up with you or with me because perhaps there is some certain sin that keeps creeping or inching its way into our lives or, or maybe that sin is just plowing its way into our lives. Or maybe we have a self-righteous attitude in which we think we're better than others or, or maybe we even think we're better than anyone else. Well, see now, those things happen in our lives and God really has every reason to say he doesn't want to have anything to do with us. But because of Jesus, because of Jesus, he's patient with us. He's patient with us as he was patient with, with King Ahaz. Well, to the Lord's offer of a sign, Ahaz responded, I will not ask, I will not put the Lord to the test. And on the surface, his reasoning it, it, it sounds, his response sounds godly and pious. You know, Jesus did say to Satan when Satan was tempting him, he said, do not put the Lord your God to the test. But here, Ahaz wouldn't be testing God because God told him, you ask for a sign. Actually, what Ahaz was revealing here is that he didn't want to listen to God. He didn't want to listen to God. He didn't want his help. He was happy to go to the king of Assyria, Tiglath-Pileser, instead of going to God. Well, Isaiah responded, Hear now, you house of David, is it not enough to try the patience of men? Will you try the patience of my God also? And here what Isaiah, Isaiah does is he refers to King Ahaz as the house of David. Since he was a descendant of David who, who had been on the throne of Israel. And well Ahaz what he did is he represented a large portion of the kings in Israel and Judah who had rebelled against God. Ahaz was trying the patience of the people by leading them astray, by pointing them to other gods instead of to the true God, and, and he also was trying the patience of God. He was trying the patience of God by refusing to follow his directives. Like Ahaz, tragically, we can also be guilty of trying the patience of our God when, when we kind of feel like we want to do things the way we want to do them instead of the way God wants us to do them. Or if we think we know better than God, or if we were ever to think that God just simply can't understand what we're going through in this life. Nevertheless, what is the case is that God continues to be patient with us. We cause him frustration. We cause him frust heartache. But yet God is patient with us. That's why we're still here. That's why we're still here today. But when we think about God's patience, which we have to be so thankful for, we, we have to remember that his patience will come to an end. And because his patience will come to an end, well, he gives us no guarantee that, that his patience might not run out. Well, today. He doesn't give us a guarantee that tomorrow we'll have an opportunity to repent. So let's not foolishly test God 
and his patience by fighting against God, by refusing to repent, well, by trying to see how patient he will end up being. Well, since, since Ahaz refused to ask for a sign, Isaiah said, Therefore the Lord himself will give you a sign. The virgin will be with child and will give birth to a son and will call him Emmanuel. And the fact of the matter is, is that virgin births do not happen. Virgin births do not happen except for Christ's birth. Even in the case of test tube babies, there still always is a a father and a mother that are involved. In order for there to be a true virgin birth, there can be no human father involved at all in the process. And that's exactly what happened when Jesus was born. As our gospel reading for today describes for us, Many people today will challenge the virgin birth of the Savior, and for that matter, there are even Bible translations that in this section put young lady instead of virgin there to try to get people to not believe in the virgin birth of the Savior. But because God promised a virgin birth, and because the scriptures say that that's what happened, well, by the grace of God, you and I, we believe the promise of the virgin birth was fulfilled in Jesus, the Savior. Finally, our text tells us that that virgin birth would result in one who would be called Emmanuel which is Hebrew for God with us. Mary, Joseph, the shepherds, the wise men, the disciples, they all had that wonderful opportunity to have Jesus there physically with them for a good time. And we also have God with us right now as well. Now Jesus is omnipresent. He's present everywhere. He said, for where two or three come together in my name, there I am with them. And now Jesus is the word of God that was made flesh who, is, who came to make his dwelling among us. And as we're studying the scriptures, as we're hearing the word of God in, in worship services, in our devotions, in Bible classes, he's right there with us. He's right there with us. And let's remember, if it ever seems in our life as if he isn't there, as if he's abandoned us, it's not that God isn't with us. It's that we've wandered away from him. We've wandered away from him. Well, there was a large newspaper that offered a substantial sum of cash to the person who could best answer this question? What is the shortest way to London? And the entry which won the prize was this. The shortest way to London is good company. And all travelers know how true that answer is. Good companionship shortens even the longest journeys. And time flies when you have the pleasure of fellowship. The journey to heaven, the journey through this life, is one that we all recognize is often, often plagued with trials and troubles and all kinds of problems that we can face, but yet it's shortened and made easier and really even enjoyable when we have Jesus Christ as our constant traveling companion. As King David said, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. 
Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. How many of you have received Christmas presents that you actually deserved? That you actually deserved? Jesus said, so you also, when you have done everything you were told to do, should say, we are unworthy servants. We have only done our duty. Now just think about it. It says here that we, of course, we can't be perfect. But if we could be perfect, we would only be doing our duty, what we're supposed to do to, for God in the first place. We wouldn't be earning any extra presence unless we were above and beyond, if, unless we were better than perfect. And, well, we can't be perfect. We always fall short. Thank God that we don't have to be concerned about earning the only Christmas present that we really need, Jesus, the Savior. Instead, we can depend on the promises of God, especially the promise to send Jesus to be our Savior. Let's thank God that Jesus was willing to live among us and do absolutely everything that was necessary so that we can be sure of heaven. The promise of the virgin birth, it just assures us of all that God does for us and that we can be certain not only that the God-man came to live, to die, to rise for us, but he also is going to come to take us to be with him forever. Amen. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, shall keep our hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. Let's confess our faith with the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became fully human. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who in unity with the Father and the Son is worshiped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let's pray. Stir up your power, O Lord, and come. Take away the burden of our sins and make us ready for the celebration of your birth that we may receive you in joy and serve you always. We pray to you, O Christ, for you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Keep in our prayers, O oh, Todd Hubert, still recuperating from his neck surgery. Don Janicki, recuperating from a stroke. Uh, Paula Burris, dealing with 
well, heart, heart blockage issues, leg infection issues. We also think about Diane Kennedy's brother's wife dealing with COPD and hospice care. And oh, we'll also think about Paula's friend Marvel who is in hospice care. Well, with all of these people, let's pray. Lord God, if it's according to your will, please grant healing. And especially as we think about these people who are dealing with different problems and troubles, we ask you first and foremost to please keep on giving them your grace and love. As you kept on going to King Ahaz, well, keep on reaching out to them with your words so that they know your grace and love. And, and please keep on reaching out to us too, like you did to Ahaz. Keep reaching out to us. We need to know your grace and love and the joy that we have as we travel through this life with you beside us. And we gather up all of the prayers we have today as we join in praying. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look on you with favor and give you his peace. Amen. Let's join in singing our prayer for our country. God bless America, land that I love. Stand beside her and guide her through the night with the light from above. From the mountains to the prairies to the oceans white with foam. God bless America, my home, sweet home. God bless America, my home, sweet home. Again, thank you for joining me for worship today this fourth Sunday in Advent. And oh, with that, just a few reminders in the congregation this week. Monday is Rob Anderson and Bob Du Bois's birthdays. Friday, Jim Weaker. Not sure what exactly our plan is. There is a fourth Wednesday in Advent. We don't have a service planned unless I hear something from some of you desiring to gather then. Um, Saturday night is Christmas Eve and we have our children's candlelight service. Choir also will be singing and that's at 6.30. Next Sunday, Christmas Day, we'll have at 8 o'clock and 10.30, we'll have our Christmas Day song services, our regular Sunday schedule. Told you about people in our prayers. Please look at our prayer list. Remember all those folks in your prayers and remember to keep on asking God for his grace and love for them and for all of us. Again, thank you for joining me today and, and in advance we'll say Merry Christmas. God bless.